ain't nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody greater. Hey, nobody nobody greater. greater than you. There's nobody, nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater.
find nobody Looked high and low Still couldn't find nobody Nobody greater, stronger, wise enough Nobody great, nobody greater than you Nobody, nobody Nobody greater Nobody great Nobody greater Nobody Nobody greater than you Oh, come on, come on, say nobody greater Nobody greater We really mean it, Lord Nobody greater Nobody Nobody greater than you Come on, one more time Hey, say nobody greater Nobody greater I can search all over Nobody I won't find nobody, nobody greater than you. Nobody, 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 nobody greater. Hallelujah. I'm so glad your name is greater than any other name. Nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, put them hands together. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. But happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. Not explain. We did not explain that happened when we, when we broke your brain. Your brain, 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 your brain,
Sometimes you just can't move. You can't move. Hallelujah. You can't move. You say, I want to move. I got to move. I got to go on, Father. But sometimes you get in that atmosphere and you just want to stay there. You just want to pass there. You just want to say, Father, I'm just so happy to be in your presence. To think about that big old God, this mighty God who allows me to come boldly. He didn't just say come. He said, I can come boldly before his throne. He says, I can ask him anything. Hallelujah. And he'll answer. He says, he's a very present help in whatever I'm going through. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Even though you can't see it, I am ecstatic on the inside that I got a friend in Jesus. How many say I have a friend in Jesus? Hallelujah. This morning I had, a, um, I had an old time. Well, I had a concert. Hallelujah. My son was like, mommy, please stop. Singing, you sound horrible. I don't care. Hallelujah. I went way back. I started singing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I was a wretch. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. Okay. I always, what? I don't know what it is, but look like the older I get, the more I remember what I used to be. I remember what it was. I remember what it used to be like. But I say, God, I've come a long way and I got a lot more to go. Hallelujah. But sometimes you got to sit back and just think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. I said, Lord, you ain't got to worry about me crying out. I'm crying all the time. You ain't got to, they're going to tell me to be quiet. Why are you always talking about Jesus? Because it's all, all to him I owe. I'm nothing without him, but because of him, hallelujah, I'm going somewhere to happen because of him, hallelujah. Come on, I can talk to you. I can tell you what you can do. I can tell you later in the midnight hour how God can come through and deliver you. I can tell you, I don't care what they said about you. The doctor ain't Jesus, hallelujah. Bless his heart or her heart, but they ain't got the final say. That's not the report you need to believe. I said, Lord, I tell you, sometimes we can get so caught up in what's going on and the political injustices and, you know, this person was killed and this is going on and this is the president. But I said, nobody's talking about Jesus. Nobody's telling people about Jesus. He's still alive. He's still on the throne. Nobody's telling people about how God saved them, how God delivered them, how God set 
them free, but we want to talk about another white man don't kill another black person. Well, listen, honey, I'm here to tell you God is still ultimately in control, and everybody's going to be judged for what they did. Hallelujah. But my question is to you, do you know Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Hallelujah. Do you know of a person that can do you like no other person? I'm telling you, and some of us got some good friends. Hallelujah. Family's good, hallelujah. Some of us are married, our spouse is good, but they don't even compare to the goodness of Jesus and the love of Jesus. So listen, y'all, don't lose your testimony. Don't lose your, your vocal. Tell people about Jesus. Now, if you're on your job and they say don't do that, then, you know, it's ways around it. Hallelujah. You slip and blood note and say Jesus loves you. It's going to be all right. <laughs> you know, we want you to lose your job. Got to follow the rules. But tell people about Jesus. This is now, now's not the time for the saints to be quiet. We should be more vocal than ever before because a lot is going on. I know we're dealing with this pandemic, but the Lord told me we got something bigger than the pandemic. It's called sin. And people are dying every day, Cedra, from sin. Anything that separates me from them. And I said, well, that's good. He said, but nobody want to talk about sin. Nobody wanna, but you want to talk about the COVID and it's killing this and killing that. But what about the sin that they're doing? How, what about they fornicating and committing adultery? They're lying or they're cheating. Nobody want to talk about that. I said, oh, God, Jesus, you don't want to use me either because I don't want to talk about that either. He said, but no, people need to know. They need to stop sinning. Forget about the COVID. Get yourself right before me. I'm coming back. I said, I know. I know. He said, will you be ready? How many say that's my testimony? I'm going to be ready when he comes back, and I'm taking as many with me, hallelujah, as I can. Well, listen, good morning. Good morning to all of you here in my live audience. Good morning to you, those of you at home that are watching. Good morning. It is the third Sunday. That's a good place to put your hands together. It is the third Sunday in the month of April. It is our communion Sunday here at Jesus People Full of Faith. So listen, we'll be doing, we'll be doing, we will be, what do you say? We'll be participating in communion later on in our service. So get your juice and your bread and join in with us as we celebrate and remember our Lord's death. Everybody's doing good. How's everybody out there doing? Give me a wave. You're doing good. Hallelujah. Okay. I don't know if that was everybody's hand, but if you ain't doing good, might as well start somewhere and go ahead and wave your hand and say, I'm doing good in spite of. Hallelujah. That's right. I'm telling you, we serve a good God who does good things in the lives of his people. Well, listen, I love you so much. Any first-time visitors, before I take my seat, any first-time visitors here in our live audience, you can give me a wave. I want to say good morning and welcome. But no, everybody's been here before. Well, that's wonderful. Something must have said or done. We got one. Why well, I always miss one. Where you at? Let me see. Wave your hands in the air. All right. Oh, okay. Welcome. Glad to have you. I should have known you was going to be here, too. I talked to your grandma. She told me you was, she was bringing y'all. Well, listen, welcome. You're going to have a good time in service this morning as we come here in the house of the Lord to celebrate. I love you guys so much. You're going to have our video announcements, and then we'll have um, our pastor, Pastor Ed Williams. You guys be blessed. Be encouraged. I'm telling you, whatever you're going through, Jesus is still in control. <laughs> Jesus People Full of Faith Ministries, a place where your faith will grow. Thank you for being a part of our live audience or for viewing online with us. Again, welcome. Come out on Wednesday nights to our midweek faith fill-up services at 7 p.m. We know you'll be encouraged. Like, share, and subscribe to our JP Full of Faith YouTube channel and Facebook page. Praise the Praise is a 15-minute power-packed time of prayer and scripture. Call in on Tuesdays and Fridays at 7 p.m. to get your weekly prayer. Today is Communion Sunday. Grab your bread and juice and join us as we remember our Lord's death. As Pastor Ed Williams says, your faith is what taps you into unlimited supply. Have an amazing week, everyone. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. I had a Martin moment. Well, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing out right there? How y'all spell taps? Huh? 
You know what, girl? I... Are you serious? Did y'all see the pinky thing? So y'all weren't watching the video then. See, baby, they so nosy. They were looking at our pinky, pep, pinky promise. How, so what, what you thought? Oh, y'all excuse me real quick. We got a moment here. I, I need to see your lips. That is not what I said. I said taps. But you did the pinky thing, right? You did the pinky thing, right? Okay, so you lost. Okay. Y'all heard it, right? She said she what? So that means who won? Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. No problem. Boy, I tell you, boy. Boy. It took, some, it took a brother that's in the fraternity to go ahead and say, yeah, brother, you won. I'm going to stay with my brothers. Because some of y'all out there, y'all are flaky like cornflakes, bro. I'm telling you. You flaky like dandruff. You just don't make no sense. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, if she lost, somebody had to win, and they tell me I don't know nobody. Who won the Super Bowl? Watch this here. Who blessed out there? Yeah, I bet you I ain't say nobody. <laughs> oh, they all, I am, I am. Yeah, y'all ears now, huh? Boy, I tell you, boy. Boy, them full of faith, folks. Boy, I'm telling you, boy, I'm telling you. I, Lord Jesus, but it's all good. Well, I know y'all doing good out there because y'all said y'all was, so I'm, I'm going to take your word. Man, they're going to stay behind. I tell you, I told you, baby, they're going to stand behind you, boy, regardless. I'm always going to be wrong. I'm telling you, hey, but I, it's okay. I've been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated. I've been used, scorned, I've been up, down, almost to the ground. But guess what? Long as I got King Jesus. Long, four, four, I didn't Jesus. Long, 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 long. I don't need nobody else. Uh oh, I don't, don't need no. No doctor, a lawyer, a teacher. You need a preacher, though, because you need some, some word for your faith to grow. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know. But they ain't from here to shop. I don't know. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gotta make the face. Like somebody in the past gas. Woo, that praise just stank. Ooh. Well, my bad. <laughs> That why, you know me and my brothers do that. Like, why are they making that face like somebody's thing? Like, ooh. That just pray. Oh, I got too religious for them because they like, I ain't even cracking on that. You getting you playing with the Lord now. No, that ain't what it takes. Come on now. Y'all just in y'all emotion. <sighs> All right. My, my, my workout from this morning still is still there. So, well, God is good. Well, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Great. Latonia, she's looking like, that is my pastor over there? God. I'm glad she, uh, I appreciate that. Appreciate it. Some of the other ones, you know, it's all right. It's all right. So God is good. Well, I'm glad that you all, you know, came to this morning. You know, I appreciate it. And on this Covenant Sunday, pray the Lord. Super Sunday, where we come and worship together with God in unity. We have a unified praise, a unified worship. So the glory of the Lord can come down and we can bask in his presence. Okay, I'm done. Oh, that's good. Look at that. Y'all like that. I, ooh, pastor. I did not know you were so eloquent like that. <laughs> oh, man. But God is faithful. Amen. Come on, give God that you serve a, a praise of your faithful God that you serve. Do y'all love y'all church? Good, good. I'm glad. I know I'm not normal. I know I'm not a Slim doing a wave in church? Oh, we got a wave going on. Oh, okay. All right. I see where y'all going. All right. Pray the Lord. If y'all trying to wave in a wig, fall over. Just pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> 
<laughs> the holy way. Some people got the track way. I don't got time for all them game theft, so this thing hurt me. <laughs> this thing costs too much money. <laughs> and I got this on sale too. Like <laughs> Y'all just preach the preach the words like I go home and take these hot these 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 uh watch these tight little girdle off and all this here about to go all that no man yeah <sighs> okay sometimes I like to have my comedian moments you know but it's okay you're gonna get the word though pray the Lord you're gonna get the word I promise you that but I gotta loosen you up a little bit what are we supposed to do now what are we doing now. I was supposed to preach now? Okay. All right, well, y'all stand here. No, we, uh, huh? This girl looking at me like I'm really special. <laughs> She's like, what is your problem? Like, <laughs> I'm asking her a question. She's like, come on, can y'all stand, please? <laughs> Lord Jesus. Let me. You, oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, we'll do that at the end. We'll do that at the end. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. This day you made. We shall rejoice and be glad. We bless you, Lord God, for your people that is here, Lord God. As we come to this part of the service where we are fed the word of God, Lord God, and me being that selected vessel this morning, I decrease. I ask Holy Spirit to speak to my mind, speak to my vocal cords, Lord God, and I pray that the word does not come out uh, to a point to where people cannot understand it and where there's no clarity where they can gravitate and, and grab it and hide it in their heart. But Father, I pray that it comes out with clarity. It comes out with simplicity to where even a five-year-old can get it and get built up and their faith can grow so they can let the world know that with you all things are possible, Lord God. So I thank you for the deliverance of the word and the reception of your word. We come against anything that try to stop you, stop or hinder it, Lord God. But we pray that the manifestation of your word will come into the lives and be prevalent in the lives of your people. We bless you, we honor you, Lord God. Thank you for your presence being here in the place because your word decrees and declares that where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are in the midst. So therefore, we welcome your presence. We thank you for the anointing that rests upon my life and the rest upon the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, we pray. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Well, listen, God bless you all. You all may be seated. Let's get the word out. And, uh... I got to set the time of the day because we do have communion afterwards, a little briefly. I normally would do it before, but we're going to do it. Let me see where we at. I do 40 minutes. Well, no, I got to do. Y'all had that powerful praise and worship. That was good, man. I, I like the praise and worship. Amen. Yeah. That's my jam, too, bro. Yeah, that's my jam. That's my song, girl. Turn that thing up. Shh, don't t- talk on my song. Girl. You know how y'all be getting. All right, well, listen, uh, uh, we, <laughs> God shifted me the other uh, last week, and, and uh, we've been talking about limit breakers. Do I, let me just do a check real quick. Do I have any limit breakers in the house with me this morning? I'm going to try that one more time, one more time. Do we have any limit breakers in the house this morning? Well, praise God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to continue that and finish that up. So I want to encourage you to take some notes out. I mean, not take some notes out, take some paper out so you can take some notes. As I get these here together, they are scattered abroad. (laughs) We're going to get them all together. They're going to end up all kinds of places anyway. And uh, it's it's okay because I'm not sure. I know where I'm going, but I'm not sure what direction I want to flow to. Uh, But we just just flow anyway. Amen. Um, uh, I want to go ahead and just for a brief review sake because of time's sake. Uh, a few things that we were talking about and uh, things that we've been, we were discussing last week. Amen. Uh, last week I said that your, your faith is the key factor to you, for you to live a limitless life. Your faith is a key factor for you to live a limitless, limitless life. So now, I also talked about last week about your faith being the rest. If you could turn to Hebrews chapter 3 for me uh, real quick, that would be great. So we can go ahead and get that. 
um, Hebrew chapter 4, verse number 3, and uh, we're going to go ahead and, and read that. I'll read that in New Living Translation. Uh, yeah, Hebrews 4 and 3. I went to James. It says this here, it says here in Hebrews 4 and 3, it says, For only we who believe can enter his rest. As for others, God said, in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my rest, enter of my rest, even though the rest has been already since he made the world. When was his rest already? So God, God had already prepared a rest for you. Even before you entered into the world, he had already prepared a rest. Uh, rest is not necessarily absent from work. Rest is simply meaning when I am working, I'm not stressing, I'm not tripping. You with me? So it's more so of me not just sleeping. Oh, I'm going to sleep and I'm not. No, it's, no you, you are doing something, but you are not stressing. You're not tripping. Amen. It says this here. They will never enter into, my, into a place of rest. So let you know that rest is a what? Place. Even though the rest, even though this rest has been uh, ready since he made the world. Amen. So now, so it lets you know that, that this place of rest, you cannot enter into there. Look, let's look at the verse. Let's look at verse two, the four, uh, verse two before that there. I uh, wanted to read that one, then go into the other one. It says, for this good news, it's a good news, right? Verse two. Come on, somebody say it's a good news. For this good news that God has prepared this rest, come on, somebody say rest, rest, has been announced to us just as it was unto them, but it did not do them any no good. Why? Because they did not share the same faith. They did not share the same faith of those who did what? Listen to God. So there's a place of rest that God has prepared for you before you even got here. And the only way you can get into that rest is by faith. Does that make sense? So faith is a rest. You can't get into this place of rest absent faith. So faith is the very thing. Faith is like the pillow in your storm. Hmm. You know, you got to sleep on something. And I'm sleeping on the word of God. I'm sleeping on my faith in what God said. So as I go, to, go through my trial, go through my tribulation, I'm able to rest. I'm able to relax i'm able to not trip because i know i have a sure foundation being the word of god and my faith allows me to sleep right there while i'm going through and moving forward so now all right <clears throat> uh i told you also that the mind is the battleground for all limitations everything that has limits everything that that everything that limits a man has to do or woman has to do uh, with his or her mind. Everything that limits a man or a woman has to do with your mind. I told you a while back that your mind, that, that, that is like this here. Your mind is a solid, well, not a solid, it's a fertile foundation uh, full of soil. It's the earth, right? So if, if this platform here is soil, whatever I put in it, I have an option to put in poison, and I have an option to put in uh, something positive, right? Whatever I plant, the earth, this soil, is obligated to bring forth whatever I put in it. So if your life is full of poison, it's because you put too many poison seeds in your mind. If your, your life is full of harvest and good things, it's because you've been seeding good things in your mind. The Bible says, whatever a man sow with, that he shall or she shall. You got to say he or she these days because everybody might think it's talking about masculinity. Whatever a man soweth, they shall reap. You with me? So now, you can never blame anybody else because it's not their hand that's going to bring forth in your life. It's going to be what you plant. So don't get upset with the earth because the earth is doing what God has already designed it to do. It is designed to bring forth whatever the, the person or person, people, 
whatever they plan in. So if your mind and you can't live life or you're stressed because of what you're facing and what you're dealing with because of the very thing that what you're facing, you're dealing with, you're blaming everybody else. It's nobody else's fault. What you got to understand is this here is that my life is full of whatever I want it to be. When you first started and everything else, everybody started with a blank canvas. You all have a blank canvas. <clears throat> Even today, you, know, you, have, you can have a blank canvas. But whatever I put on this paper with my hand and my, pen, my pen, it's whatever I put on here. You with me? I want to put that I'm going to be a millionaire by 50, Hello. right? Millionaire. By 50, right? So now, if that's what I just put, right, somebody over here just, just yell out and say, no, you're not. No, you're not. I just say somebody. I ain't take all y'all to try to stop. I'm, no, I'm just joking. I'm just teasing. So now, somebody over here said, no, you're not. Because 50, man, it took, it took so-and-so 50 years to get to that point. Right? Well, how are you going to do that? So I heard that there. Somebody said, you can do it over here. So somebody over here said, no, you can't. Somebody said, over here said, yes, you can. Say, no, you can't. Yes, you can. I got all this chaos going on, but it's my decision to check it or erase it. So either I'm going to check it or I'm going to erase it. Who did the checking and who did the erasing? So it doesn't matter what they say. So where you are today don't have to do with nobody that's around you. You drew it. You, you deleted it. You with me? So you can't let naysayers stop you when God said everything is yes and amen. Because you're going to have some people say, no, it's not. But God say all things are possible. But at the end of the day, God is going to say, I can't make it possible if you saying it's not possible. Because there are going to be people telling you what you can't do, but you got the paint, the pen. You got the paintbrush. So many times, how many times have you li listened to people and you had plans in your life and you just said, what, what? Man, okay. Let me just lower this to something that's reasonable. No, reasonable don't work at God. God wants you to do something that don't make no sense. Are y'all with me? God want to give you things that you couldn't save for. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my God, I'm, I'm trying. I don't know if I, 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 Do I have any limit breakers in the house today? That's all I want to know because if it's not, I just preach to the camera. I preach to the camera like I'm on TV and I got a TV audience. But I'm trying to get you to understand that, that you got to realize and know that people are going to tell you what you can't do. You may have more people telling you that they don't make no sense than telling you, girl, go ahead, girl, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. If that's what you believe, girl, I don't care what nobody, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, say, I can do it. It can be done. Oh, oh, what? Oh, I heard that. Now, Paul said this here. Paul said, Paul said this here. Y'all, I, I don't know the scripture. I know it's somewhere in one of them Indians. And, uh, 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 or Eans, I don't know if it's Corinthian or Indians. Uh, well, one of them ones in the New Testament. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? Philippians. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. Indians. Right. Uh, uh, I can do all things through Christ. <laughs> Come on, say, I can do all things through Christ. Let's break it down. Say, I, I want everybody in this place to say, and all, all of y'all, say, I can. I can. Say, I, I can. can. Come on, say, I, I can, can. Do, all do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Somebody tell me, the now, I know we're going to get religious, but I don't, I don't want you to get religious. I want you to get realistic right here. What's the most important word of what you just, you just quoted right now? I. I. Yeah, I can. We know Christ can do. We know what he can do. But Paul say, I ain't worrying about what he can do. I got to get you to understand that I can do. Oh, my God. Come on now. So the problem is you worry about what God can do. What God can do is not the issue because he can do it with you or without you. God wants you to realize that, no, you can get it done. See, I don't know what you face this morning. I don't know what your goal is. I don't know what you're reaching for. But God wants to tell you this morning that, oh, you can do it. Come on. That ain't help none. Let me try on this side over here because that side weak over there. I say you can do it. It can be done. Paul say, I can do it. Not anybody else, but I can do it. I can change my economics. Oh, but now God can do it. No, 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 no. He said, I can do all things out 
through Christ. So it's not mattering who is coming through because it's through Christ that it can get done. But it takes you to get it done. It takes you to do it. You got to do some things. Christ, Paul said, I can do all things. How? But how are you going to do it, Paul? Not by my education. Not by this here. Not by that. But how are you going to do it, Paul? I know you said you can get this done. How are you going to get it done? Through Christ. See, we get so religious. Oh, Lord, that's good, God. We get so religious to where we have no results. <laughs> get so religious to where you have no results. If Jesus would have heard, listen to the religious leaders, he would have never, he would have never produce results. Because before Christ, there were no miracles. Yeah. Think about the fact that the gate called beautiful, that this lame man, that they used to carry him in front of the church every Sunday to beg. And you're entering into the house of the Lord where all these anointed and powerful people, supposedly, but the problem was that was not, that was a religious church. That was not a powerful church. Because if any of you bring a lame person and sit them outside where the power is, that's like putting, that's like the paramedics taking somebody that's, dead, that's about almost dead and they don't take them in the hospital, they leave them on the outside of the hospital. But according to scripture, that's what the church people were doing to this same lame man, putting them outside to beg. But Paul say, hey, money, I have none. I don't know what John them got and all the mothers what got with me, but I, money, I have none. But what I do have. Well, what, did he not say that? He said, I don't know what everybody else around me have. Everybody done, that passed you by and carried you behind here. I don't know what they have. Oh, come on now. Y'all want to help me this morning. I don't know what they have, but one thing I do have, the money that they've been giving you, I have none of that. In other words, you say, I got some money, but your issue, money ain't going to help. But what I do have, come on now, what I do have, I have an anointing that's in me. I have the power of God that's in me. Get up, Mick, get up. Take up your, get up, get up, get up. And the man said, oh, I never heard none of that there before. And he leaped up. But the problem I have with that scripture is that it was right outside the church. How many people you walking by when you got the, you have the ability to change their life? Mm, 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 mm. Oh, you just co continuously just dropping coins into their bottle when they say, help me, I, I, I need, I, I'm disabled and I need money for this. Instead of saying, hold on, Paul did that? I mean, uh, Peter did that? Well, the same power that worked in Peter worked inside of me. Huh. Money, I have none. Get your behind up and walk in the name of Jesus. Oh, y'all with me or not? If it was... It, if it was never intended for you to believe that you can do it, he would, he would have never made scripture. Okay, maybe that ain't for everybody. Okay, okay. All right, all right. So now, the mind is the battleground. I told you that there. So what we have to do is we have to Romans 12 and 2. We have to renew our mind. We got to get our mind renewed. We have to transform. Be transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. You got to get your mind Renew. We got to get outside of limits. We got to get outside of limits. Last week I told you what limit is something that bounds, uh, restrains, or confines. Something that bounds, restrains, or confines. It also something that uh, it means also to restrict the bounds or limits of. Some synonyms for limit is boundary, cap, ceiling, in, limitations. I, I announced to you this morning that your limitations is about to be broken. Uh. Your boundaries is about not to, Lord Jesus, okay, that's good. He, I was about to say something. He said, don't say that. Say this. But I was, I'm a, can I tell him what he, okay, what I was about to say that your, your boundaries is, is about to expand. But he said, don't say that because that's not what we're doing. He said, they're not going to have any boundaries. <laughs> Oh, come on now. You know, people say, oh, God's about to expand your boundaries. No, you're about to be bounded. You have no boundaries. You, how can you, do you, to say God is about to, that means I went from 1,000 to, 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 to 10,000, but you still have a boundary. You still have a limit. We got, we got to live beyond limits. 
Well, it, it, well, it is a, well, no, well, past is a process. I understand it's a process, but my process is not my purpose. My, the process is not my picture. I saw me living dreams. The process is me getting into the dream. Yeah, I may be at 1,090 going 10,000 like right now. I said that, and I said at the beginning of the year, before we hit the big part of this year, we're going to be at $200,000. We, we about there. Yeah. We got two more months. We, we about there. We gonna, we're going to be there. I don't care what you say, what you think, what you need it for. It don't matter. We need it because that's what I say we're going to be at. So I don't care what you say, what you think, what pastor, or what about other people. I don't care about other people. My faith can't fail. If, Bible says, if you decree a thing, that thing that you decree, it shall be established. Established means that it got to be birthed. My word is the seed. God's word is the seed. I'm telling you, I'm going to water it and keep on watering it and keep on watering it and put the light of Jesus. Jesus, the sun, come on now, the S-O-N that sounds like the S-U-N that's going to shine light on what I water and bear forth fruit. How is it going to happen? I don't know. But you got to get a raise. You got to get a promotion. You got to get more money somewhere. Why? Because you're a tither. You're a giver. And Pastor Ed said this is where we're going to be at. So you got to elevate to another level to bring forth the word of God because it shall not return void. Can't return void, yo. It can't return void. No, you, you. Glory to God. Like, my gosh, how long are we gonna stay where we at? How long are you gonna maintain at that level? I wanna get to a level where I need help to be maintained. I can't maintain it by myself. I need some partners to help me because God is now. I, God has now broke my environment to where it needs to have, it has expand to where I need assistance. I, I can't do it by myself. I, there's too many people now. I can't do it by myself. I got too much money now. I can't calculate it with one mind. I got to have this person responsible for that part. I need the people over here for Faithville. I need people over here for Full of Faith. I need people over here for that area. For that area, it's like, my God, Lady J, you do it all by herself. But it got so big, we need help. It don't make no difference. Somebody help me, help me, help me. Do y'all want to go there or what? I ain't talking about full of faith because I ain't worried about full of faith because my level when I drive around and I see land, I see it. I see it. I'm talking about your level where you want to be at. I don't preach for my level. No. I study for my level. I, 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 I meditate for my level. I'm just letting you know where I'm about to level at. So I don't level by myself. So I'm telling you, not, not I'm just letting you know where we're going. So where, oh Lord, let me just, let, let, me, let me just give y'all some of this stuff here I got. I, 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 it wasn't my plan to, let me just put these here. Can I give y'all, can I give y'all some rhema? Y'all want rhema? I mean, everything I give you is rhema. They want you trying to tell you this ain't rhema. No, everything I give you is rhema. But I'm about to give you something fresh off the press right now. I was going to hold on to this, but I was, I was going to give this and then work my way to this. But yeah, I need to just get to this. Let me just go ahead. Let me just hold on to this here. Let me just hold on to this here. Watch this here. Watch this here. Watch this here. Watch this here. Y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this. See, you got You can't be a limit breaker if you're still living in your past. See, you got to leave your past behind. Watch this here. Your past either will kill your future or it will build your future. Mm, help me, Jesus. Come on now. So if you're going to live in your past, either it's going to kill your future. Oh, oh, I've been hurt when I was five years old, so now this has happened. Oh, I tried that five years ago, and it didn't work. Oh, this here happened to me. And people, this ain't that there. I tried that, and now the, 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 the economy and corona is even worse right now. So I know it ain't conducive right now. Or you're going to sit and say, you know what, girl? I know I went through hell last week, but I'm about to take the hell that I went through, and it's about to elevate me to heaven. Y'all with me or not? Come on now. All trials, there will be trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer of what? Your trial and your tribulations. Why? Because Jesus overcame that to elevate me to the next level. If you want to go to the next level, you want to be a limit breaker, you got to be able to evaluate your past. <laughs> yeah, you must decide a purpose in your heart. If your past or your previous experiences, circumstances, 
and situations. Oh, y'all, let me, let me. <laughs> y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready for this paper. You say you're ready for the paper, but I don't think you're ready for this paper. Because this paper is going to bring some more paper. I'm talking about paper mean money. <laughs> I'm talking about paper mean promotion. Paper mean, paper mean that title. Paper mean that deed. I'm talking about things that you, 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 you if, you, if you're ready for it, then, okay, I, I, I'm going to give it to you. You must decide and purpose in your heart, not in your mind, in your heart. If your past or your previous experience or present experience, circumstances and situations are going to dig your grave or build a stage. <laughs> you got to make up your mind. All that you went through, all that you got going on, the cancer that you're facing, the diabetes that you're facing, the drama that you're facing, the lack that you're facing, the problem that you're facing, either it's going to dig a grave for you to where it's going to be harder to get up and get out, or it's going to build a platform for you and a stage for you so where you can be elevated to the next level. God wants you to have a mess so you can have a message. You can't, uh, people don't want to hear you if you never went through something. They don't want to hear to know what you're going through. They want to know that you're going through. Everybody going, everybody is in something, but the question is, can you get out? People that are influenced and have influential authority and until you listen to you listening to is not the fact that what they have, it's the fact that what they had. And, and what they had produced what they have. Oh, come on now. Yeah, you probably had some hell that you went through. You probably had some issues that you went through. You probably had some drama that you went through. But I had it, and now that thing done built a platform to where everybody want to know what God has brought me through. Are you with me or not? Or it can dig a grave for you. It can kill you. Oh, you just stressed out because of what they did to you 15 years ago, and you can never forgive them. Digging, 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 not digging the berry, but you digging the carry, digging, and now you got all the weights on your back of what somebody did that's not even with you no more, and they at their level, and you, 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 they're at their level, Lord Jesus, Father, help me, Jesus. They're at that level without you, but you're living in a level now as if you're with them. And now you're looking all beat up and old, and you see them, and they're happy as ever. And now they have no regrets. They felt that your life, your time with them was a reward. They say, wow, I have no regrets being with them. Me leaving them or me breaking that relationship or me leaving that job, that was a reward. <laughs> Y'all with me? Or you, it can be a grave. Ah, oh, I tried that business. It ain't work. Digging. I tried that relationship. It ain't work. I did this. It's like, girl, don't let that go. It's hard to let go because you're, you're in the grave now. So when you make up your decision, I don't want to do that no more. I want to change. Guess what you got to do? God, can, God cannot get you out the grave that you dug. It's going to take you now 15 years to get on a platform level of a, of a plateau. Like normal. Because you're so deep now. Now you got to dig stairs in your depth to get to a level where you should have never been at from before. Does that make sense or no? Because if you can't get that, then you... Let me explain to you. The lady with the issue of blood, she had an issue for 12 years. I know y'all, I talk about this story all the time, but there's just so much profound revelation I can get out of it. It just behooves me. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. So the lady had an issue for 12 years. She had an issue for 12 years. She lost everything, and she got she lost everything for 12 years. She tried every doctor in the world, every doctor everywhere, but yet still, it didn't get any better. It got worse from the ones who was educated and knowledgeable on how to bring her out. So God will let you go to who you think and bring you out, but they'll, they'll, what they'll do is they'll keep you in deeper. 
I think y'all need to meditate on that scripture right there. I'm going to say it one more time. She lost everything. She spent everything and went to every doctor. And nobody can help her, but it got worse of her condition. But the word declares that she heard about a man. So either she could have said, hold on, I tried every man. And I gave my money to every other man. But she said, you know what? I heard that this man is different. She could have stayed there and dug her grave and died with her issues. Or she could have got her mind right and said, you know what? Today is my day to try this other man. Oh, my God. Come on now. So once again, it's the same situation whether you like it or not. So she went to that other man with the other man not even knowing she was there. So I didn't care if you know if I'm there or not. I just want what I went for everybody else for. Mm. I had faith that everybody else can help me, but limitation stopped everybody else. But I heard you have no limits. All I got to do is tap into what your supply is. I don't need no medication. I need power. Power ain't going to... Uh, medication can't do what power can do. Oh, my God. Help me, Jesus. So if I just touch and get attached to what can bring me out and set me free, then I'm okay. So... In her mess for 12 years, she ignored her mess and she did not dig a grave. She made a stage to get to the man that everybody else was talking about. Oh, my God. Come on now. But she, heard, she must have also said to herself and she knew it took faith because she said, you know what? If I could just get to the hymn. How she knew the hymn? Somebody must have told her and she must have had some revelation where the power was going to come from. It had to be a touch, not just, even though there's power in the word, but you got to be seen to get to the word. But she knew she was illegal. So I don't care that if I'm illegal, I just need to get to where I got to get to. Yeah. And her faith got her there. Mm, y'all with me or not? Her faith was her maps on your iPhone. Turn left, turn right. There's traffic ahead. Stop. There's this here. Your route may be this way. Er, detour. Why? Because your, her faith was like, okay, hold on, hold on, no. don't go there, don't go there. But I, I believe, and I'm going to tell you one, I'm going to give y'all this here. I, I, I was running one day. I don't do a lot of running. I ain't like Forrest. I run and walk. Forrest just run. And, uh, um, and what happened was, that was, and the Lord told me one day when I was, I was meditating on that scripture, and I said, oh, Lord, she was illegal and they didn't even see her. He said, no, because her faith made her invisible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I'm about to mess them up. See, y'all don't think y'all ready for me today. Y'all ain't ready for me today. I got some supplements in me. Y'all ain't ready for me today. And they sung my jam. How in the world that a how in the world that a substance and a, a, a source that is designed to burn your skin, but you can go in with faith and and you become invisible or touchless to what that thing's supposed to kill you. Maybe I said it too fast. That's why I like to talk slow. How is it that a source, a substance that is designed to destroy, but yet still you are in that destruction, but yet still that destruction environment, that destructive environment yet still cannot touch you. It, you become untouchable to a source that is designed to destroy. How did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego get in fire designed to destroy you, designed to burn you, designed to kill you, but yet still you are in the midst of it and you become invisible to that source? The source can't find you. Can't find you. Where they at? I know, I know some, they say somebody there, but I, where they at? Where they at? I can't touch them. I can't burn cancer. I know, I, no, no, no. I tried to kill them, but they got stronger in their faith while they were in it. They got stronger while they were going through this hell. They got stronger while they were going through this situation. I, I set it up to kill them, not to build them. Oh, my God. Y'all don't want to help me preach this morning. The devil want to kill you, but God want to build you. How are they going to use the same stuff? Same stuff. The same thing that the enemy, whatever they meant for evil, God is going to flip it around and turn it for your good. So you may have that result. You may have that diagnosis. You may have that report, but it's okay. Either it's going to be a builder or it's going to be a killer. But God's plan is to build you with what? The same thing that can kill you. Oh, y'all with me or not? Either it's going to put you in a grave or it's going to build a stage. What you got to make up your decision? <laughs> Joseph sold to slavery brother sold to slavery black man read your word sold into slavery white people wasn't in slavery then no read it 
this is close to Ethiopia and Africa and all that. Read it. It's in the, read it. Look at your maps in the Bible. You'll be surprised. And uh, how in the world, imagine how the brother felt. I showed, we sold him to slavery to keep him away from increase. But the thing that we did to keep him away from is the thing that set him up to get to. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm preaching better. Y'all say something this morning. Because the slavery route was for him to get to the king. Oh, Lord Jesus. So he had to get sold to get. Yes. Uh, come on now. So don't worry about if you get fired. It's going to take you to get fired for you to get your own stuff. Is, is it, are y'all reading the Bible or not? I need to know if y'all understand what I'm understanding here. I thought God was with me. If the Lord was with me, why are they going to send me to slavery? Look, look at this. I'm all moving backwards. God said, no, you're not. I'm taking you to a route to where you got to get to, to there's somebody that you got to get to. If you're never a slave, you can never get sold. That means it can never be purchased. How else you, how else you going to get into the king house? What other route are you going to get to the king house? But the modern American, the modern people today, is they think I'll get to the king house because I done built this big old kingdom and now this other king want to know about me. No, they're not really going to work. No, you're going to get into the king house. You may be the brewer. You may be the custodian guy. But what did Joseph do? It's okay because I know what God has planned for me. So if I got to live at sta slave stage for a while, it don't matter. That's not my final stage. My final stage is what God told me. That's how you can go through your stuff and still be built up. Because I know I may be in this right now. I'm trusting God in the process to my destination. My destination won't get, it will not be fair. It will get, I will get to my destiny. I'm going to get to my destiny. But my destination may be different. The process may be different. I may have to detour. I may have to do this. I can't go in reverse because God is not a back God. He may tell me to turn left or right, but it don't make no difference. Everything is not going to be a straight line. God may tell you to lean sometime. He may tell you to curve sometime. He may tell you to turn left sometime. He may tell you to turn right sometime. But if you stuck in just going straight, you're going to be in trouble. Oh, God told me this one day. He talked to me a lot because I meditate a lot. Y'all want to hear God's voice and get revelation? Meditate. Stop talking to him so much and shut up and listen to him. Like, Pastor, I ain't never heard that before because you talk too much. Duh. <laughs> God told me this before I was, I was, I was uh, driving. I was driving here one day and I say, oh, I think I, I said it a few months ago when I was like, life is not on the highway. Life is at times like on a local street. You got to make turns. You got to do this. You got to detour. The Lord told me one day, he said, uh, that during the same time, he said, the problem with people is the destination can be here. But even if you have to turn, and you never see me, does not necessarily mean that I'm not there. Ah, help me, Jesus. So we want to just stay in a straight line so we can always see what's there. What about when God takes you to a di direction that you don't see where he told you before? All you got to believe is that I may not see him now, but once he tells me to get back, I'm being in alignment where I want to go. God help me. Is this too much for you or what? See, you can't break no limits because you just, you don't understand this whole thing of process and how it works. It doesn't matter if God make you go left and right and go like, I don't understand why I'm doing that. I, I saw him and you get happy when you see where you're going. But what about when you don't see it? Do you still believe? Thank God that those, for those that do not need to see, he told, he told everybody. He didn't tell God. What did he tell God? Bless God for those that don't have to touch me. Bless God for those that don't have to see me, but yet still believe. When you don't see the manifestation of God, when you don't see how God is going to do it, when you think it's the impossible situation, the question is, do you still believe that God can do it, that I'm going to get there, that I'm going to make it, God is going to bring me out, I'm going to be there, but I don't know how, I don't know what, I don't know what's going on. It don't, it don't make no sense to me. God, show me a sign. I don't need a sign. I need a word. Blind people don't need signs. They need to hear a voice. 
A lot of people say, Lord, show me a sign. You can't see a sign. They say, can I hear your voice? I want to hear your voice. I don't need to see. I need to hear. Because that's how faith comes, not by, hear, by, by seeing. It comes by hearing. Talk to me, Lord. Talk to me. Talk to me. Go right. Go left. Where you want me to go? Where you want me to go? I don't care where it is. I want to wait till I touch my destination to know I'm there. Oh, because it's wet foot, dry foot. If I can touch the ground and I made it my place. Because every place the sole of my feet has tread upon, I got to get to my place. <laughs> Lord, give God praise for that. Come on now, you can do a little bit better than that. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. God, we got about a couple minutes. I ain't even nowhere near there. We ain't there yet. Are we there yet? Nope. Y'all ready? Watch this here. Watch this here. This thing. This thing. The light back there making the, the, the light back there making the sound. My ear thing falling off. The devil don't want somebody to get broken out of. <laughs> he don't care. We'll strip everything off. We'll turn it all off. I preach in the dark. I preach with no mic. You're going to hear the word. Mm. You got to change the way you think, people. Come on, so you got to change the way you think. Don't let your mind. Let me just put this in a beat and we pause that there. I'll let you know when I want my last two minute warning. I, got, I have authority over the time. Okay. Yeah, I ain't waiting five years. I'm about to get my breakthrough today. <laughs> <laughs> that lady say, man, I don't, got, I don't got 12 more years to waste. Where that man at? They missed it. I don't got 12 more years to waste. Where that man at? I heard about that. Where that man at? I'm about to get to him. And the Bible said that it, it, she didn't, it was not that she just went out her door and Jesus was there. She had a journey. So in the journey, she was believing. Are you believing God in your journey or are you waiting for God to be out your front door? I don't care if you're in Orlando. I'm driving. I'm going to the rest stop to get me something to eat. I need some gas. It don't make no difference. But when I get to Orlando, I know that while I'm on my way there, I'm on my way there for purpose because he's there. And he's going to bring me up. So I'm believing in the journey. Come on now. I'm believing in the process. I'm are you believing in the process? Are you believing what you're going through? Are you believing why you sitting there with bad credit? Why you can't get afford? Why you can't get no home? Why you can't afford it? Why you going through hell? Are you trusting God in the process? In the journey, are you believing God? Or are you going to believe God when you see the light? I don't need to see the light. I got the word. Can y'all get the more of this? I don't, I don't need to see a miracle. I don't need to see this here. I don't need to know what everybody else is doing. All I know is the one who said it is faithful. The one who told me he is faithful. He cannot lie. Nothing can stop him. Nothing can hold him. Nothing can delay him. Nothing can control him. He ain't bound by time. He ain't bound by space. He ain't bound by science. Whether it's medical, whatever it is. If he say, I can do all things, then guess what? It can be done. Why? Because he said it. Who gives you the authority to speak that way? I, God did. Who gives you the authority to say that you can beat cancer? Jesus did. Who gives you the authority to say you can beat poverty? Jesus did. The word of God said it. So he gives me that authority. And he's obligated to provide. He's obligated to prove wrong any naysayers when I stand on his word. You got to have stupid faith to break limits. You can't break no limits without no stupid faith. Just stupid faith. People are just going to start calling you stupid. That girl out of her mind really think that she's going to be a millionaire and she'll cash at McDonald's. No, I'm about to own this McDonald's and five more. Well, if you're going to own it, how are you going to do that? No, girl, you don't understand. God got me in a slave state so I could be in the owner's. Ah, come on. Woo, Jesus. I don't know how McDonald's run. I don't need a way to get the corporate. I may be a cashier right now. I may be learning how to flip these burgers. So when I own it, I know what I want done now. <laughs> Boy, y'all, y'all, y'all. Uh, help me, Jesus. <sighs> okay. Don't let your mind close you down. I got, I got to be done after this one here. This is going to take months. 
Uh, it is going to take longer than I thought it was going to be. Just turn it into a book. Don't let your mind close you with walls. That ain't it. Don't, don't start writing. Don't let your mind, you got to change your mind. You got to change the way you think. You got to get your mind right. Don't let your mind close you, close you in with walls of hurt. Close you in with walls of limitation. Close you in with walls of restrictions. Every time in your mind you're thinking you can't do something, it's just a wall that's being built. Lord Jesus. So some of you feel trapped. Not because you are entrapped. It's because you build the trap. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. So you are in that room that you feel that's limited in space, a cell, literally because you built it. You can't let go of your past. There's a wall. You think you're not smart enough. There's a wall. You think that you're not you in a maze trying to get out. But now there's a dilemma. I don't need to be set free because I know the Bible says who the son set free is free indeed. Yeah, we know that. We're talking about free from sin and death, not free from what you've been dealing with. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. Jesus is not coming back down to set you free. He's already did everything he's going to do for you on that cross. Now he said, because I did everything I'm going to do for them on that cross, God, it is finished. They have now been re-equipped. Oh, my God. And I have now redeemed them to the place that you have created them from the beginning. That's why it's called recreated. God created you. Jesus had to come back down to rebuild you and recreate you to where you're supposed to be from the beginning. So now you are now back in a creative state to where you can do things that God has equipped you with through Jesus. Does that make sense? So now, as I say this, listen to this. Don't let your mind close you in with walls of hurt, limitations, and restrictions. But if you are in that state, it's okay. Let the word of God and your faith don't. Let the word of God, Jesus help me. I just know annoying on this because as I repeat it, it just, just does something to me. Let the word of God and your faith in the word become a sledgehammer. Jesus help me, Lord help me. Become a sledgehammer to tear those same walls down. Ah, oh my God, Jesus. So you may be going through hurt. You may got restrictions. You may be dealing with hell right now. You may be dealing with a sickness right now. And you feel like there's a wall. You feel like you can't do something. But the word of God can be a sledgehammer to knock them same walls down. This is not unto death. The word of God said, with long life, he's going to satisfy me. Boom, knock it down. Oh, y'all don't want to help me today. Come on now. <laughs> No, 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 no. I ain't going to be at the bottom no more. The Bible says I'm the head and not the tail. So I'm not going to stay right there. Knock that wall down. Y'all with me or not? Because if you can knock the walls down, God can take the roof off. Because at the very, oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me, help me, Father. Help me. Lord, I wish somebody was working that camera because I feel like walking and I can't walk because they got me in this box like I'm a Holy Spirit because there's nobody back there. There ain't nobody back there, Lord Jesus. But I'm telling you right now, Lord, I need a panel. I need a panel. Because what I understand is that if I knock down, if I knock down the walls, Brother Jackson, then guess what's going to happen to the roof? The roof can't stand without no walls. The problem is you're looking at the ceiling, but you got too many walls around you. You need to walk down, not the walls down of pain, not the walls down of, of, of what they say you can't do, what they say you can't make it, all that they said you could not do. You tear down the walls, the roof going to come off, and then now you can see. Oh, Lord Jesus. Now, <laughs> Oh my God, come on now. Then now you got another fresh. You got a revelation now to where now, you know what? I can make it. I can do this now. I have no boundaries. I have no walls. I have no limitation. Oh, I'm breaking the limits. You can't break no limits without breaking no mess, without breaking no hurt, without breaking no trials, without breaking. You got to break some things. How do you break it? With the word of God. How do you break it? With your faith. Your faith. You got to get the word of God. You got to trust God. You got to speak the word. As you speak, things fall. 
Oh, come on now. You can speak it with a praise. You can speak it with a worship. I don't care how you speak it. You can go around that thing and pray. You can go around that thing and sing. You can go around that thing and worship. It don't make no difference. But something got to come out of your mouth. <laughs> God can't bring forth what you never decree. He said, if you decree a thing, that thing that you decree, it shall be established. Oh, you're going to make it. Oh, you're going to come out. Oh, you're going to get that point. Why? Because you spoke it. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but y'all look at me like I'm on crack. I am on crack. I'm on some Jesus crack. I'm on some crack that I got a word that I know that where I'm at right now, I'm not going to be here that long. Why? Because I got the authority. God has given the ability. It is the power that's in me that allows me to break all limits, all restrictions. You can't hold me. You can't stop me. I ain't going to stay there this way. I ain't going to be on welfare long. I ain't going to, no, 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 no. I'm about to change my political party. Oh, only the rich people Republican. But doggone it, call me Republican then. If that's what you want to identify. Are y'all with me or not? <laughs> I have no, no identity. I ain't Democrat. I ain't Republican. I'm just Jesus. I'm whatever the words say. That's the problem. Can't break no limits. Break the limits. You break the limits. How am I going to do it? With the word of God. The same thing that got you restricted is the same that's going to get you free. <laughs> same thing. Lord, this is good. I got this last one and then I got to go because I'm getting tired. I don't got that TD Dakes breath. I don't see how they do it, but I do a lot of running, but I don't do a lot of hooping and talking like that. Brother man, tired. That would look good to me. <laughs> last one, then we're going to go. Y'all probably ain't going to be a pastor say, or a preacher say, this is the last one because I'm getting tired. Well, you need the energy of the Lord. Shut up. You know energy, you no know, Lord. My energy is for me to keep on pressing. <laughs> Shoot. I'm, I'm preaching hard to get y'all in this thing. I'm trying to drill it in you. I'm trying to tap into some oil. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, oh, Lord, that came out of spirit right there. I'm trying to, I'm drilling, trying to break. Lord help me, Jesus. That, that's a revelation right there. I, I received that myself. I am a driller this morning. I'm trying to hit oil. They don't know what oil means, Brother Jackson. When somebody hit oil, what that means? You about to become a billionaire. Ah, I'm, I'm here to drill in your head, drill in your mind, so I can hit, God can hit some oil, and you can be broken free. Everybody got oil inside of them. You just got to dig. You got to dig. You got to dig. Some places are digging it they're deeper than others because what? They don't got so much around them. But the Holy Spirit can dig through anything. Lastly, this coincides with the last thing I said about don't let your mind close you in with walls of hurt, limitations, restriction. But if you're in that state, it's okay. Because let the word of God and your faith become a sledgehammer and tear them walls down. Oh my God, Jesus. Man, I started running. I started running. I, I, I started running faster when I got this. I typed this into my iPhone as I was running, and then I just started running faster. Then I got tired and then started typing some more. So every time I get tired, I type. Then the word gives me some energy. Then I get tired and I type again. So right now I'm catching my breath. Tear down negative thoughts. Tear down past hurts. Tear down limited imaginations. Because God wants to take you to a place of unlimitless, immeasurable, and bottomless blessings. Ah, but he can't take you if you're still holding. Let me just go through this because I normally get some more next week. I just know it. So I'm, I'm just going to compile, 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 and we're never going to get finished. If you want to experience a limitless God or the limitlessness of God, you need to have a fire party. (laughs) 
I know this is going to mess them up. I didn't want to get here. A fire party? Come on, somebody say, what is a fire party? I ain't talking about a fire party because it's cold outside and you're trying to stay warm. I'm talking about a fire party because you're about to burn some mess. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. There's some, memorab there some memorabilia. Oh, God told me it's strong this morning. There's some memorabilia that some of y'all need to burn up. There are some things that you're holding on to that you need to pitch in the fire. Past relationships, you need to throw it in. Past hurts, you need to throw it in. You still talk about what somebody did to you when you were eight years old. You need to throw that into the fire. You need to have a fire party. You need to burn it all up. Burn away them old pictures of your ex, ex, ex. Burn away all this of your other ex. And all the other, and I'm thinking about your next. All, burn all that up and get in tune with the word of God. Burn it up. Oh, come on, say burn it up. You got to burn it up. You got to burn it up. All that when the daughter said you can't get out of burn that mess up. All that when they said you're going to never make it burn that mess up. No, you got to burn that mess up and take what God said and say, you know what? All of that foolishness, what they say I can't do, I'm putting it in the fire. Burn it up. You need to burn everything that's stopping your progress. Old relationships, burn them up. Anything that's stopping your progress, you need to burn it up. Y'all ain't gonna like this one here. I wrote this big too. Contaminated friends, put them in the fire. Yep. But Pastor, we've been friends since I was five. And you still the same way? Put them in the fire. Yep. Delete them, baby, I'm where I'm going at. You ain't conducive for where I'm going. I love you and all. I'm here for you and all. But right now, you ain't helping me get off this ground. I've been driving on the ground for so long, it's time for me to take flight. Oh, my gosh. Because I can't take flight to where God wants me to be at because you still got me in with my wheel down. I'm tired of I've been having my wheel down on this plane for so many years, and I'm just learning how to just, just get to the, 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 the acceleration of flight level. I don't want to get to and keep on being 90 years old, 50 years old, 30 years old, 20 years old, and still at only acceleration flight. I want to get to the point to where now the man say, you can now take that, that doggone level thing and start pulling it back now. How I many of you are still on acceleration flight, but you're never going to get to uh, altitude level? 50 years old, still on your own acceleration level. You can go fast, but you can't go high. They don't get it. They ain't getting it. I can see how they're looking at me. Oh, yeah, but man, I'm, I'm doing better. You're doing better, but you're not getting higher. Yeah, you're managing the debt now. Great. That's wonderful. I'm glad you managed. I'm glad your credit is better now, but you still owe somebody. So now you're thinking that you're doing good because now you can manage your debt. That is not God's best. God's best is no debt. Being the lender and not the borrower. When you're at the level of lending and giving and not borrowing, that means you have now created an altitude state. You're off the ground now. Oh, come on now. Today is the day we're about to get off the ground. Are y'all ready to get off the ground today? Contaminated friends. You don't need no more mem memorabilia. Get rid of that memorabilia. <sighs> Why you to get rid of memorabilia? Somebody asked me that. <clears throat> because for what God is about to take you and for where you're about to go, he wants you to leave all that old stuff behind and focus on what he got ahead of you. See, you, you can't cast things based upon your feelings. You can't cast things based upon your self-pleasures. You know, oh, you want, you want this, you want that. You know, things that you have that, that want to please your feelings and please how you feel. But you got to have the word of God. Let the word of God be that factor. It has to be the word of God. It has to be the word of God. 
Watch this here. How can I say this here? Bring that back to my memories because I, I see that it was deleted, but I, I know it's there. I hear it. Watch this here. <clears throat> Until you change your mind and you allow God to break this limit that you have and the restrictions that you have of this particular place of where you've been trying to go. You got to change your mind to get there, right? The issue that you have is that it's in your mind. But the only way you're going to break that is, and what happens is, when you change your mind, your past, your hurt, your problems, your, your issues, they are things that are holding you down from taking flight. So some of you can't take flight because of what's holding you down. <laughs> You've been fighting hard, praying hard, fasting hard, and, and doing all this hard. But the issue is, <laughs> you have never yet released the weight that's stopping you from accelerating. All I see is, I just see it, and I saw it earlier. I just see an object trying to get up in the air. But what's attaching, is attached to something that's stopping it from getting up. Y'all with me or not? Yes, sir. Y'all see, y'all with me? It's like, it's trying to go up, but behind it, Watch this here. Watch this here. That's a good revelation right there, God. Why is it whenever somebody trying to stop somebody, they always do it. They put a wall in the front. But the only way you can hold it is attaching some weight behind it. You can't, the only way you can stop me from progressing forward is if you block me from going forward. But when you know you can't stop me from moving forward, you only could try to slow me down and tack something behind me. Oh, Lord, heavy Jesus, come on at you. <laughs> but I don't care what's behind me because as long as I got eyes that's ahead of me, then I know that I can get to that point I need to go. But God wants you to ignore and break free of what's behind you. Some people think that you got to get back and cut it. But God said, as you accelerate to what's ahead of you, then that thing that's behind you can't hold on to the force that's driving you forward. Ah, help me, Jesus. And it, y'all want to help me this morning. Come on now, because if you accelerate, if you accelerate strong enough, the force of acceleration is going to break this force of restriction. Help me, Jesus. And then now that thing that's been holding you back can't hold you now. Because now you, oh, y'all, y'all, y'all with me or not? Come on now. So as I continually press forward, 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 press forward. The thing that's behind me that kept stamina relationship, it fell off. That diabetes fell off. That cancer fell off. That hurt fell off. That past pain fell off. Why? Because I ain't worried about what's behind me. Because the acceleration forward is greater than that. Oh my God! Than the thing that's holding me back. But what the enemy wants you to do, he don't want you to accelerate on the gas forward because he, he know that if I got your mind on what's behind, you're going you're gonna to be limited on your acceleration what's ahead. And that's why you ain't going nowhere. That's why you can't break no limits. Come on, say I'm a limit breaker. Come on, say oh, you got to stay strong on that now. I don't like that. Say I'm a limit breaker. Come on, say I'm a, I'm a limit breaker. Say I'm moving ahead. And I'm accelerating. I'm going to that place where God has called me to play, to be at. I'm going to that place 
where God has called me to be at. Come on, say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender and not the borrower. Come on, say, I am debt free. I'm stress free. I'm worry free. Come on now. All my past is gone. Come on, all my past is gone. I am on my way. Come on, I am on my way to immeasurable blessings. I'm on my way. Come on now. To, y'all, y'all gonna say it strong? To bottomless increase. Say, I'm moving. I'm moving ahead. I am doing it not by my ability. I'm not doing it. I'm doing it not by my education. I'm going to do it not by my money, but I'm doing it because great is he, great is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. Therefore, nothing can stop me. Therefore, nothing can hold me. Therefore, nothing can contain me. I'm on my way. Come on, say, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Come on, give God praise, people. Oh, you better get excited, man. Don't look at me right here. So when you turn back, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Don't keep looking at me in the same place. No, 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 no. God told me to tell you right now, tell your friends that that meet up point where y'all always meet at, tell them that that's about to change. Oh, oh Lord, help me to you. I'm going to say it again. That meet up point where y'all always meet at, the Lord told me to tell you, let your friends know that's about to change. Why? Because you're going to another level right now. You're going to a greater level right now. I know we always meet at that place, but guess what? God has elevated me now to another level. So either you can come with me or you can stay without me. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Oh, that's annoying on this. I'm telling you right now, man. Y'all better get this. Y'all better get this. We about to break some limits. You about to break some restrictions. You're going to be 15 years old and millionaire. You're going to be 19 years old and don't worry about nothing. You're going to exceed and accelerate where your parents been at. It probably took your parents 50 years. It's going to take you five years. It may take somebody 20 years. It's going to take you 20 days. Why? Because I got something. I got something. It's a revelation that brings but that brings the increase. It's revelation. Not information. Revelation. Bless you, Lord. We honor you, Father. Come on, lift your hands high as you can reach him. Give God some, just worship him. Father, we love you, Lord. We worship you. We honor you, Lord God. You are a great God. You are an awesome Father. Ah, oh, we bless you. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Died on the cross for I pray, Father, if anybody does not know Jesus more than their personal order Savior, that they just say, Father, forgive me. Of all the wrong I've done, I want Jesus Christ to live in my heart. Forgive me as I forgive all those that hurt me, all those that did me wrong. Father, I want to be locked up in a place of worship and a place that I can grow. I need a spiritual trainer to be able to build my faith muscles, to get rid of my past fat. I need to get rid of that baby fat, Lord, so I can be built up with some future strength to get to that place where I need to be. If you need a church home, we want you to connect with us this morning. To say, I need a church home and we'll be glad for you to join this place and you may want you're going to need some help it's called Holy Spirit he's going to be there with you teach you guide you lead you direct you convict you on your own you may say hey I want that gift that gift of Holy Spirit pray in tongues speak in a heavy language you can just ask for that gift and the Bible says he will give it to you liberally if you want that gift you just say Father fill me with the Holy Spirit that would evidence is speaking in tongues and at that moment, he will feel you right now as you're being filled. If you want to just respond to any of those, and you have responded to those, we want to welcome you to the 
body of Christ. We're going to welcome you to this ministry. And we want to welcome you to being a limit breaker. Where you are right now, you're not going to be there long. Start living out of bags and stop living and putting stuff in, in dresses and buying furniture. Because where you're at right now, God is getting ready to elevate you to another level. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise this morning. Come on, let's take our communion out. We're going to go into communion. Communion is a time and opportunity where we commemorate the very thing that Jesus has done for us, the very thing that Jesus died for. The Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. The blood of Jesus is washes it cleanses us white as snow. And I'm going to pray this morning, we're going to bless the elements, and then we're going to go ahead and let you all take and eat and finish up with our offering and giving. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this time of communion. We are commemorating our son, Jesus. Father, forgive us of all of our wrong and our sins. And Father, if we have any art in our heart against anybody, Lord God, we forgive them, and we want you to forgive us for holding it. Father, we are as dirty as we can be, but thank God for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us. So as we're commemorating Jesus through this offering, this, this uh, communion this morning, with the bread that represents his body and the juice that represents his blood, we ask you to bless this element in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, you can take it. We're going to give you about a minute or so. And you can go ahead and meditate, do what you want to do. did not uh, get a communion supply element and you want one, make sure you get one off the table. If you're still holding an empty cup, go ahead and lift those up. One of our elders will get those from you. Alrighty. Like everybody's already done, you at home, I hope you partake and participate with us as we commemorate the Lord's death. He told us to do that. Uh, just, you know, I believe communion is a very important time because for me, it allows me to just even let the Lord know that I am standing in total agreement with him with his death that as I'm drinking that juice that's the blood that he shed for me for the remission of all of my sins hallelujah and the bread and the bread his body was broken when he was bruised and he was whipped all that for us so that we can be here today and so it's just another act of my belief and my confession that Lord I thank you that you are God of my life and so that's why we do it around here we're going to do it until he comes back we do it every third Sunday here why we do it third Sunday that's because what we do it but I know some ministries they take communion every Sunday I know some people take communion every day you know if the Lord is telling you to do that so be it but make sure it's just more than just something to do something sacrilegious know why you're doing it the purpose behind what you're doing it and understand the importance of communion and so come on put your hands together one more time for God just Jesus just becoming everything he knew no sin but he became everything for us so that we can have life and have it more abundantly well listen we're going to go ahead and take up our offering it's that time of the service with all of us yes go ahead and put your hands together again one more time y'all do a lot of clapping at that church <laughs> 
welcome well we're excited people around here believe it or not if you don't see it sometimes on our faces we are excited about jesus and what he's doing in our lives and so we're just thankful to god and so we give because the word says for us to do and as obedient obedience to the word but we also give because we've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread and so it's, we count it as an honor too to be able to sow into the kingdom of God here at Jesus people full of faith and as I always say you allow us to be able to do what we do here at full of faith I mean I'm telling you I'm just so in awe of how good God is and he's going to continue to be good as we be obedient well lady Jesse you don't know what I'm going through I need stuff I need this we say it all the time i'm robbing peter to pay paul i really never understood that until i became an adult but i tell you you can't beat god's giving you don't have it anyhow so why not sow it into the kingdom and watch god do the miraculous in your life and so i'm here to tell you that i've never 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 had a need that my god has not met maybe don't do it when i want him to do it but he always comes through right on time that's because i'm a giver that's because i sow and so i got harvest that i'm gonna reap because i'm sowing seeds hallelujah Hallelujah. And not just here in this church to offer envelopes, but even in people's lives. When God tells me to do it the other day, I'm going to share this with you so we can get out of here. I was in Publix and I was running, rushing to get home because I like to feed the family before we come out for our midweek service. And she was just having a difficult time. You know, the car wasn't going through. She went on the phone and texting. And I'm saying, like, how long are you going to let this young lady stand there and do that? I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, let, let me, my treat. Let me, let me take care of that for you. I'm telling you, she looked at me like, do I know you? I said, no, you don't know me, but this is what I'm called to do. I'm called to be a blessing. And so the guy that was bagging, he said, I don't know what just happened, but I feel it was something good. I said, it was something great. He said, oh, man, he said, that's good, ma'am. That was good you did that. I felt so good. I walked out of the public. like, I did that. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I felt so good about that. I went home. I told my mom. I tell my mom everything, huh? So whatever. I told my mom. I said, Mom, I paid for the latest growth. She said, you did. I said, how much was it? I said, I don't even know, Mama. I didn't even think about it. I just put my card in and kept it moving. But that's because I'm a blessed woman. Why? Because I'm a woman that knows the importance of sowing, hallelujah, into the kingdom. And so that may be little for you, but it's a star for Lady Jessie. Whatever. Come on, we're going to go ahead and pray and we're going to dismiss. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to sow into your kingdom, God. We thank you for the lives that are being touched and changed through the sowing, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, that you are using Jesus' people full of faith to help others, Lord God. Even today, Father, we're going to be sowing into something that we believe that we know you're calling this man of God to do. And it's because of our partners that sow here into the ministry, God. And so we thank you even now that you're going to get it to us so you can get it through us father god and so we will be a blessing to those that are around us to our community at large lord to those that we don't even know father god we will be able to sow into their lives your word declares that nobody wants to listen to a poor man that does only mean financially lord god but we're gonna have that too but we also gonna have the word of god in our mouths father so we thank you lord god for these are seeds that we're sowing into your kingdom this is fertile ground this is good ground father and so we honor you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Go ahead and put it in with a smile. And after you put your offering in, go ahead and stand with me. We're going to go ahead and sow into the kingdom. Hallelujah. All right. While you all doing that, take out your, your paper, your notes. Well, you got a pen there? Because I know I saw you taking notes. you like, you can stay there, though. Because y'all, you remember, I, was, I told y'all I had one more thing for y'all. Right? And I said I couldn't find it. Let me tell you how, the, how good the devil is. And I'm going to say this to the devil. Because I looked at my iPad. Anybody got Apple devices in here? So whatever's on your iPad, right, is supposed to sync. Whatever's on your iPhone is supposed to sync to your iPad. So I printed everything off my iPad. But on my note, like, I just got to let me show it because y'all think I'd be lying. What that say right there? Look at this part right here. What? what that's where you can see that. I wrote a big because I knew I was going to have you read it. Lady, example, lady with a right there with your finger, baby. Right there, up, oh. up, up. Then you lift me up. I go down, lower, if you lower. Change the. That's it, right? Right. That's all it say, right? If you change the right, like you. That thing matched me up. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and I ain't even type that. You feel me? You, why you laughing? But now watch this here. What you see on my phone, right there? If you 
It's all there on my phone, right? Let me make yeah. it bigger for you, cause you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's true. That's word with me, word with me. It's if there, you, right? Yes. It's all there, right? Right. But it ain't all there, there. No. Ain't the devil a liar? So watch this here. Let me read it to you. Take your notes. So watch this here. Cause I, I, I don't. I gotta add the word "don't" on here. If you don't change the mind, right? If you don't change the mind of your failures, you're gonna miss the flight of your future. Oh my God, Jesus. So, watch this here. The problem is, we still worried about our failures. We still thinking about our failures and now you're going to end up missing your flight that's going to take you to your future. You can't fly up if you're still worried about what's behind you. Come on, man. Listen, I love y'all, man. I love y'all. Amen. I, like, I know I, like, I, know I typed that. Like, I ain't crazy. Yep. He say cuckoo for cuckoo puffs. All righty then. Boy, you got to love Pastor Ed. Put your hands together for Pastor Ed. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it's so funny. And I'm telling you, I, I, he's just that way regardless. Even when he's on the platform, he's still, you know, funny like that. And sometimes I don't laugh at all his jokes. He say, well, funny to me. Did I laugh? <laughs> Well, come on, we're going to go ahead and pray. We're going to dismiss. Listen, I admonish you to listen to that word again. I'm telling you, it was some good nuggets that he said this morning. Sometimes you can't get it in the 45 minutes to an hour that he took today. But listen to it again. Share that with others. Let people know in the goodness of God and the word that we're getting here. We are some limit breakers. How about you? We some limit breakers. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to breaking some limits in my own life. Hallelujah. Well, come on, I'm going to pray. And we're going to dismiss. We went a little late today, but I thank you for your patience with us hallelujah father we thank you for you have been in this place with us this morning we have truly feasted and dined on your word father god we thank you for your select chosen vessel of this house father that he studies to show himself approved father god he brings us word with clarity god with power with demonstration and yes with a little humor but father through it all god we thank you that we will take your word we won't just sit here and nod and clap, Lord God, but we will take this word that you're teaching us and we will share it with others. We will walk this word, Father God. We will live your word, Father God, because people are looking and they can look at us here full of faith, Father God, as we will be doers and just not listeners of your word, Father. We are some limit breakers. Let us start this week. No, better yet, let us start today, Father. We thank you for you breaking some limits even now in the name of Jesus, Father. Do it. God as only you can take the roof off father God blow our minds father God oh God and we will never forget to give all glory we will never forget to give all praise to him huh, who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that is working on the inside so we say use us here full of faith father God we will be a blessing to others and we will give you the glory thank you for this is your day we're going to have a great day. We're going to have a great week. Hallelujah. We confessing it even now. Even before we go into these offices tomorrow, we are already decreeing and declaring peace. We thank you for it even now. In Jesus' name, we honor you and praise you for you are worthy to be praised. Amen. Well, come on and put your hands together one more time. I promise you that's the last time I'll make you clap today. <laughs> well, listen, you have a blessed rest of the week, a blessed rest of the day. I've always looked for opportunities to be a blessing to people and all you already know you are a limit breaker so let's go ahead and break some limits y'all send the testimonies in too to let us be able to share with others about what God is doing well listen we love you you are blessed and you are dismissed and as always I